Hello everyone, it's Matt here and welcome to the video uh, after Liberty Bricks. Now Liberty Bricks was, a sh was held at the West Midlands County Showground in Shrewsbury um, and originally it was a show I was actually going to volunteer for starting Friday um, and unfortunately I fell ill Friday quite badly um, and Friday was a write-off in terms of me. I spent almost half of it asleep um, just to get through the illness um, so it wasn't a really good day for me. Um, Saturday I was a lot better, I was doing um, model work, I did some model work Friday, um, so like the decaling but bulk of it not much. Um, did a good portion of it Saturday, so some of the model work I started on, uh, some BMR tankers, um, and sort of doing the underframes and seeing how well they went to, how well they went together and what parts I need to order in. Um, and then some of those on Bricklink and doing a few of the bits pieces and more decaling, did a bit for live stream about how to put decals on. Um, and how I did it and showing you some of the models as well that I've put decals on to get almost ready or ready um, in that sort of respect um, but yeah Saturday was not much better so anyway about the uh, show and I was very fortunate to get one of the event bricks so there it is and I'll be able to swap out my uh, Castle Bromwich uh, Hall brick um, I think it was back in April, March, April sort of time. I pick pick that up. Um, so the rest of what this is going to be is pretty much all about uh, what I picked up. Um, Chef Bricks um, is was the first one I went to. So we have some monopods and euclids. Now these uh, monopods are not the regular monopod, and I'll get one out. It's actually easier. Um, I'm trying to show you. These are the monopods which have the laser sights attached to them, which are not what I'm after. Um, so, to put to you or give you a bit of perspective, I'm trying to find the way I can show this off. Um, to put, show this off, oh, maybe hand over. You can sort of see it has that uh, laser sight uh, right there, which is white. Oh, wider than the clip itself so essentially this is really not the most easiest of things to show I mean, you sort of see that there's that nice bulbous bit on the side and you know this one side's nice and clean one side isn't so I'm gonna have to try and cut these down to size um, which is not what I'm after but then again there don't seem to be many UK sellers of brick arm stuff which is a bit of a shame because um, it's quite useful stuff just with the monopods and new clips new clips I've got um, enough of so I've got enough here to uh, replenish some stocks and get some BMR cars on the way um, and Chef Bricks also had a lot of other interesting bits and pieces so um, I have some sandbags here I'm not sure who made them um, but they're three long and they've got some receptacles either side of them as well um, there's one of the tiles from the Ninjago CMFs uh, I think it was 70s Garmada um, so I'll see it there with the mountain and the print um, and I'll just be useful to stick somewhere as a painting or something um, there's a couple of M24 grenades um, an old style Lego pitchfork uh, it's, I don't have many of those and the one I do have I've actually repaired myself probably after I broke it but I was a kid at the time uh, a few guns in there and a buzz cola uh, can as well because why not um, they're not exactly the most common of things um, the other things I bought from Chef Bricks, uh, there's only, there's, we had three of these sort of like bags of pieces if you like. So we have red 1x2 tiles, um, they're always useful, I've actually run out of those as well, need some for the caboose. 1x1 uh, one one tiles in light bluish grey, um, so it's always good to get a restock of those. I think I'd, I'd got some, but it's always good to get some more. Uh, then also got some of these 1x1. One uh, plates with the thick clip um, so instead of having like a U shape this is like an O clip um, so you can sort of say it's a straight through um, no, there you go you can sort of see how it's got that nice bulbous bit uh, and you can uh, sort of like anti we sort of like stud bits on either side so you can attach bricks to the side um, which is quite clever way of doing some snotting work if you're ever interested in that sort of thing or you can put flex tube through it or you know it's got a wide variety of uses um, 
Unfortunately, I didn't actually need any in black. I actually got a whole section just for black. So um, I don't know how well this is going to work. You can sort of see the middle section there is all black. And that's it now, about two thirds full. Uh, well, about half, half full actually. Um, so, you know, it's more fuller than it needs to be. I don't have any great need for those at the moment. That's one by four. Um, so, yeah, I think I've actually run out. So, into the hatch we go. It's got a nice little layer there uh, at the back of dark bluish grey, red, reddish brown, uh, black, and dark. Is that dark tan? It is. That shouldn't be in there. That should be in the front one. Yeah. Yeah, some reddish brown. There were a fancy greys at the bottom, but you know, it just gives a nice restock. Um, and also the reds. I might as well put them away while I'm on camera. Uh, one by two, not those. Yeah, I don't have one for reds, so into the general one they go. So that's them nicely stocked up again. Um, so you know, it just means that you know I've got a bit of a partial restock. Um, I could have gone cheaper on Brickling probably, but you know, as an AFOL, you know I've got. As, as many people say, you know, in any particular hobby, if you want to try and further the hobby and try and get people into it, you need to have the retail support there. Um, and you won't generally get it outside the like, Lego events. You know, some shops will do it, but, um, you know, for stuff like this and Lego shows, it's always good to uh, spend some money and get to some customer going around. And, you know, you spend some customer, people recognise you, you'll go, oh, you know, I'll do you a deal on this or that and that sort of stuff. So you can't get recognised and that sort of thing. Um, next on the list is LJO minifigures. Um, so I didn't buy any minifigures, despite the name. I actually bought accessories, so it was four for two pounds or ten for four. Um, and there's a special thing you uh, if you you know you know where they know you're an AFOL or you bought a good portion of stuff from there before, they'll get you allow you to do twelve for four, which is a really nice bonus. Um, so I've got some rackets, um, sort of like an Indiana Jones hat, uh, some apples, some bananas, another pitchfork, um, and a warning sign, and a, and a clock and a map. Um, so the warning sign is kind of like the old style triangle, um, which I thought was just a really nice one. The map, which I think is an Indiana Jones one. Um, and this will probably be upside down to you, but there you go, you sort of see it's just through there. Um, and then you've got your very, very regular, fairly common clock. So it's just some a bit of a restock, a bit of variety, you know. Um, and especially for like food items, it's you know, it's not something you'd not normally consider buying, so it's always nice to get some of that. Um, the, the last place on the list is one more brick. Um, so one more brick do a variety of mini builds. Um, you know, there's a flyer here. You know, you can sort of see some stuff for a do, sort of like uh, little kitchen uh, vignettes, almost if you like, uh, and snooker tables and uh, miniature start <coughs> was <coughs> set. No licensing uh, there though, um, and taxis and a few other bits and pieces and all this sort of stuff. So. You know, it's always nice to uh, get little bits and pieces which you might not always necessarily think to do, but it's always good to get. So lots of things like toilets as well. Um, and I actually bought a jukebox. Um, so I'm not going to show you the opposite side because it's instructions. Uh, but see, you know, there's all the pieces. So uh, you know, it's always nice to get little things like that. And it's not something you'd normally consider. Um, especially for me but it's always nice to get you know a little tidbit like that and then you can always build it up and you know do that sort of thing um and in terms of acquisitions um there is one final thing and this is a fairly large thing um but it was actually something i got for free uh, and it's actually uh, some of you may know neil uh, b uh, i'm not going to put his full name out 
Um, he's the person who's done the Olympic Velodrome and a few other bits of the Olympic sort of stuff. Um, and he was the one who arranged cobbler's bricks as well, if I remember correctly. Um, and presented the check, uh, you know, the large, comically oversized check. Um, and he's very generously donated a load of bits and pieces. So we have some uh, one by eight bricks in red, some one by eight bricks in blue, um, some one by two cheese slopes in black, uh, which are always useful for hoppers, um, some one by one tiles in black. Ooh, that one's got letters on it. Um, some two by two. Uh, two, two by two tiles in black, so one by six tiles in red, um, so one by two grill, but grill tiles in black, I want to say, um, and some of the one by one um, vertical clips or horizontal clips, depending on what you'd call it. I call them horizontal um, because they're flat, so. I'll take one out. You can sort of see they're actually flat there, but they've got that nice huge clip. These are f version three, I think. Uh, version four is a little bit more curved. Um, there's a few one by two of those cheese slopes in red as well. So, um, so to give a bit of a background, I sort of said earlier that you know we've been exchanging parts on and off. Um, he exchanged parts to me first, and I gave him a few pieces back at the. Uh, West Bromwich show actually um, I actually pinned some of his parts for the um, Penty box car actually um, to go back all the way I needed some reddish brown um, clips which are a lot for the handrails because I was short and he'd actually got some so I uh, took some off him gave him some of the bits I was using you know as filler uh, back to him and then we exchange, he gets other things, and I sort of said, Well, what do you want in return? He sort of said, Well, everything got any X, Y, and I sort of went, Oh, yeah, I've got that, I've got that, I've got that. And he was also collecting the sort of like chests, sort of like the treasure chests from like the original castle theme and divers as well. I think they're used in quite common. And sort of said, You know, what color? Oh, he's after rare colors. So I said, Well, I've got this one in line with that came in, you know, correct all sets of interest. Oh, yeah. Um, what else have you got? And I sort of took a photo and said, Oh, I'll have that light grey one. I said, well, Okay. And uh, just beware the hinge doesn't work. And, you know, so we've been doing that. And, you know, hopefully it will continue and hopefully we'll get uh, some more out of it. So uh, he gets the parts he needs and I'll get some of the parts I want. Um, the bricks, like the red and the blue, um, to give a bit of perspective on what they're going to be used for, the red ones are probably going to be used just for um, some more of the Pell Power Company hoppers. Um, I sort of ran out if you like effectively of red one by eight bricks um, partly for the hoppers partly because of the um, Lehigh Valley caboose I'm building um, that's pretty much complete but I needed some for the sides you know it's all that sort of stuff where I'm going to start I always start building something and then re realise I run out of parts about a quarter of the way through if that um, of the right colour so I have to substitute and all that sort of stuff and yeah um, and there's also a few other bits in here as in here as well, like these uh, one by two plate with two clips on the side for the bogey side frames as well. So um, those are used to get a few bits like that. Um, so in terms of the actual sort of like show exhibits themselves, um, it's quite nice to see Michael Redfern stuff. Um, you know, I've always seen a good few photos of it from the Sheffield uh, lug uh, uh, Facebook feed and. Few other bits and pieces on the link. Oh, Instagram as well. I think I've seen the other one or two. Um, so it's always nice to see that sort of side, and it's always always nice to catch up with some of the members of the lug and all that sort of stuff. I mean, the the shows I'm going to are more or less Brook Central ones because a lot of the others are a bit further afield. Might not be as easy to get to from my position, um, or I might not have too much of an interest in because of cost to get there or various things like that so um but normally brick center ones are fairly easy to get to um normally i volunteer at them as well so you know i'm always in the show even though i'm not you know an exhibitor or you know paying to get in as a visitor i'm always there as a volunteer so i always get the chance to meet up and chat and help set up and break down and one of the things i did today you know after the after the show had sort of we sort of went um you know, it's a lot i got there for about half two and I think by half three it was sort of going, yeah, it's getting a bit quiet around here, isn't it? And he went, it's like, yeah. And I sort of said, okay, I'll start packing up, you know. And I think by quarter, pa quarter four, people were starting to pack up. Um, 
you know, in, in put it in perspective, um, by five o'clock when the show was officially advertised as being f- uh, finishing, um, pretty much three quarters of the hall was empty. Um, or at least broken down, ready to go out in, into the various uh, cars and vans that brought it there, you know. And it's just sort of one of the things where, you know, it's just a bit of pre planning and, you know, maxi uh, sort of event, you sort of close and go quicker. Um, and I was helping out, uh, moving stuff for various people because obviously it's a log event, you know. Officially, I didn't volunteer, but, you know, it's always good to, you know, lend a hand where possible. Um, I know, and some of the people were very appreciative of, you know, having some somebody to help grab some boxes or put a tent down or stuff like that so it's always good um from that perspective to be able to you know do that sort of thing and especially for some people who are coming to you know sell or despite the show and they're not used to brick central and the sort of thing there's somebody with a brick on t-shirt sort of going out and helping them you know it gives a positive image not necessarily for me as an individual um, but you know, as a wider sort of member of the Lego community, and as a member of the log as well, so we know that, you know, oh, I went to that Brick Central event. You know, maybe I didn't make as much money, but you know, we were nice and friendly. You know, I got all the drinks and all this sort of stuff. And you know, oh, there was a, you know, a couple of people who helped me move this stuff. You know, and it just sort of, it sort of gives us sort of a feedback loop, if you like. I, I didn't get that, but I got that, and you know that was positive, and then it sort of does a spin, if you like. Um, it's always that sort of thing where I help you, you help me, and that's one of the good things about the hobby, um, as far as I will say. So uh, yeah, I think this video has gone on for long enough. So uh, that's it for me and the view of Leverage Bricks, and I'll probably be uploading this tomorrow morning. Um, it's currently quarter to eleven uh, local time for me, so uh, time to go to bed. So. Uh, See you in the next video.